So again, high school is four years, college is four years, PA school is two to three. So you're looking at around 10 to 11 years of total education to become a PA. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And today I'm gonna be going over a stepwise kind of instructional video for you guys for anyone that is in high school that wants to become a PA and the steps, the education, and things I recommend at each level of, I guess, schooling that you're at and uh, the different things that it takes to become a PA. And so I get a lot of high schoolers asking me questions like, what should I be doing right now? What can I do to make myself competitive? Um, what classes should I take? Things like that. And so I haven't made a video going over exactly what I recommend at each step, high school, college, post-grad. And so this video is gonna be kind of like a timeline video. And again, this is my own personal opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. And again, this video might be more catered towards high schoolers and even college students that are kind of lost at what, should they, what they should be doing at the moment. And I'm actually gonna start out with being in high school. It's crazy because in high school, I had no idea what a PA was and you know I didn't even really know what I wanted to do and it's actually funny because I didn't take any AP science classes I pretty much took all the other AP classes that were available at my high school but I didn't take any science ones even though I kind of knew I want I was pre-health that was just kind of the idea that I had um, I didn't take any science classes uh, AP science classes in high school so that was kind of interesting and I think in the long run it kind of was nice too because I had to take all the general classes and I didn't have any AP credit for those science classes and so that was helpful in terms of actually taking all the prereq courses during college and postgrad. So if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior in high school, this kind of applies to everyone generally and so I'm just going to you know speak in terms of being a high schooler. If you know about the PA profession and you're interested in it in high school, that's so amazing and it's so crazy to have so many high schoolers reach out to me about the PA profession because for me I just again was so lost about all this and had no idea didn't even think about the PA profession at that point I graduated in 2010 so I'm kind of old my 10-year reunion is actually coming up in like two years like a little less than two years so yeah I'm getting old but I still feel really young again I'm only 26 I'm not that old <laughs> The biggest thing that I recommend for high schoolers is take some science courses because a lot of classes that you do take in college and PA school are going to be science based. So get a feel for if you actually enjoy science courses. And so if you do, that's great. If you don't, that's not necessarily going to count you out or be a terrible thing because you can learn to like it later on. Look to take different science classes. If you can take anatomy in high school, I highly recommend it because that's honestly a lot of what we work with is the human body and the different organs and whatnot. In terms of extracurriculars, I definitely recommend you guys to try to shadow any type of healthcare provider, whether that be a physician, a PA, an NP, PT, OT, and so if you know a family member or a family family friend that's a PA or MD, you know, or NP, uh, email them directly or talk to them directly, give them a call and see if you can shadow them for a day because I think that's the biggest thing that's gonna help anyone, you know, figure out if they like the PA profession is to shadow. And you might end up falling in love with being a doctor or like following a doctor around and seeing what they do so I know it's hard but if you have any family or family friends that are in the medical field I definitely recommend you to try to shadow them for a day and shadowing means just following them around seeing what they do at work um, seeing patients etc things like that if you can do that for even a day or with a pro one provider that'll be a great experience for you in terms of volunteering and extracurriculars, get involved in things that you're passionate about. A lot of you probably play sports, instruments, or you know, video games, things like that. Figure out what you're passionate about and join clubs. A big thing about the medical profession and applying to medical school, PA school in general, is they like well-rounded candidates. So you don't have to necessarily join like a medical club or uh, a PA club per se. I think you know, figuring out what you're passionate about outside of school as well is really important. So if you love sports, you know, obviously play sports. If you like video games, 
um, make a video game club or something of that sort. So kind of branching off that, volunteering, community service, I definitely recommend you guys to try to find something community service based to do as well. Um, it's really important to give back to your community and also to volunteer in general. And I think that always looks really great on your application and looks great on your college application and your PA application. And I think volunteering is a huge thing that you can never have enough of. I know a lot of people want to get medical hours, patient care hours and certifications, things like that. I know a lot of them require you to be 18, so that might be a little bit out of the question. I know some like CNA certifications or programs allow you to be 16. I may be mistaken for that, but uh, I think I've heard of high schoolers that have CNA experience, so if you want to get hospital experience, the CNA route might be a good way to go. All right, so this is for all my college folks and for everyone that's in college, you know, what should you be doing? And the biggest thing I think, again, is shadowing a PA, shadowing providers, and also taking your prereqs for PA school. So if you've noticed, PA schools all have different prereqs for their application and their admission. And so you want to look at kind of like the main programs that you're interested in and trying to get a feel for all the different prereqs that they want you to have. And so for most of them, we'll have like a year of general chemistry, biology, anatomy, physiology, microbio. Those are kind of like the core that most of them will always have, but some of them might include genetics, biochem, organic chem. So you want to look at each program that you're interested in and kind of make a list of all the prereqs that you need to take while you're in college to meet those requirements. And college is honestly a great time for you to gain patient care experience. I definitely recommend you guys to get certified in something like EMT, CNA, uh, medical assistant, scribing, anything like that that will allow you to gain patient care hours in college. I know it's tough because studying is your number one priority and it should be your number one priority and doing well in your classes, but you do want to get a head start on gaining those hours. And for me, most of my hours were gained the end, like junior, senior, and post-grad for my patient care hours. And again, I was a physical therapy aide for three years, two volunteering in undergrad, and then one year full-time postgraduate. So I definitely recommend you guys to be shadowing, taking the prereqs, volunteering, and joining clubs that you're interested in. Again, I wanna emphasize that you don't have to only be in medical clubs, pre-PA clubs, things like that. You know, if you're, again, passionate about bowling or like archery, anything like that, community service, be involved in those type of activities and extracurriculars. And when it comes to your application, you're gonna definitely stand out because you're gonna be passionate about those things. But again, for college, you wanna be shadowing as much as you can. It's tough, and I do have a video on shadowing. I'll post it in the link below or in the description below. It's tough, but it's really important to have. Um, you wanna be taking the prereqs, you wanna be joining clubs and extracurricular activities that you're passionate about and also be gaining your patient care hours. So you do want to start getting certifications or you know volunteering in hospitals, things like that to gain uh, healthcare hours and patient care hours. Post-grad, if you're like me, I took two gap years before I applied to PA school. And so technically it was like two and a half years off. And for me, what I did during this post-grad time was shadowing as much as I can and working full time to get more patient care hours. And so one year of full time work accumulates to about 2200 hours. So if you can work full time as an MA, EMT, something like that, physical therapy aid, you can gain a lot of hours. I also retook some prereqs. Actually, I retook one and then I took a lot of prereqs that I didn't have because my university didn't offer anatomy and uh, microbio and microbio lab together. So it was kind of weird. So I just took a lot of the prereqs that I needed that I didn't have and that was kind of my life when I was a post-grad. And I also shadowed as well. And PA school, once you're in PA school, it's a lot of studying. School is obviously your number one priority. Um, most PA programs are two to three years. Obviously, you're not gonna have as many extracurricular activities. You're gonna be studying a lot. When I mean a lot, you're gonna be studying so much. And it's like fire hydrant worth of information coming at you. It's really fast. You may get burnt out. I've been burnt out plenty of times. For me, I'm only through the didactic portion, so I haven't done any of the clinical year stuff, which is the fun part. And so I'm really excited about that. But it's a lot of studying and a lot of exams. The material, I would say, 
it's not harder than college, but it's just so much more in a shorter period of time. That's where it gets difficult. And I think a lot of PA students can attest to that as well. Once you finish PA school, you're gonna take the national exam. It's called the PANTS. And so once you pass the PANTS, you become a PA. And kind of just recap the timeline for each. So again, high school is four years, college is four years, PA school is two to three. So you're looking at around 10 to 11 years of total education to become a PA, um, and that's including high school. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. Again, I want to just emphasize shadowing is probably the biggest thing that I recommend you guys to start on. Volunteering, community service, joining clubs that you're interested in, and then taking classes that are pertinent to the situation that you're in as well. I haven't done a lot of this informative style in a while, so hopefully you guys do like this. Um, please give it a like to show support. And don't forget to be like my blood type, be positive. See you guys in the next one.